I'm John. And we thought we'd do a quick video on some tips for not to farm with a family. Whether you have toddlers or bigger kids, we thought we'd give you some tips and tricks that we learned in the last few days that we were there. Alright, so my first tip is to make sure that you get your food in Ghost Town. Because we went through Snoopy Town and then we went into like Fiesta Kingdom or whatever. And the food there, while good, was not something that three quarters of our kids would eat. It had a lot of lettuce in it, and um, it wasn't flour tortillas. They were corn tortillas, and white corn tortillas at that. And um, yeah, in general, we got, I think, I don't know, maybe three or four taco plates. And um, we got two things of rice, and we probably should have got more rice. So. For our family, anyway, it would have been better to go the other direction and go to Ghost Town. Ghost Town had, like, pretty much anything you could think of. They had turkey legs, they had burgers, they had fries, they had funnel cakes, they had pretzels. There were some candy. places pizza. I don't think we saw they had, that. Yeah, they had pizza. I mean, I'm pretty sure you could find salad. I mean, there was something for everyone there. So my suggestion is lunch in the Ghost Town area. It was just better prepared for kids. <laughs> so that was my first suggestion for lunch, definitely. What about you, honey? Any suggestions for the trip? Um, my tip would be if you're staying at the Knott's Berry Hotel, um, they have a breakfast with it, and Snoopy goes there, but he's only there from like 9 to 9.30 out of several hours of breakfast, breakfast time. So the first day, we, 11, yeah, yeah. first day we didn't see him at all. The second day we got there in time, but he, by the time we waited for a table, he was already moving on. But luckily, Snoopy and his handler were very nice, and they came over to see us. So we didn't miss him, which so, was really cool. Yeah, find out what time he's going to be there, and... Give yourself some earlier time so you can be there eating when he shows up. Yeah, or go downstairs or call down and book your reservation ahead of time for, like, the time that he's going to be there. Maybe somebody in your room, you know, awake earlier so they can go down and do that. Another tip that I learned while we were there is if you have somebody in your party at the hotel that's having a birthday, they will bring up a free treat. They don't charge you for it um, for the birthday person, which is really, really cool. So um, if you call down the front desk and say we're having a birthday, they'll send up a free dessert from um, room service. So I thought that was like a really nice perk. So that is a suggestion just for the hotel, but I thought that was really cool. Along those lines, um, when you go into the park, there's an information booth on your left. And if you have somebody with a birthday, they can get a birthday button there. So, and it had like Snoopy on it, and it said happy birthday, and they write their names on it. So it was pretty cool. I thought it was pretty cool anyway. So Jack got a souvenir button out of the deal for his birthday. Um, another tip I got is, we read, on, or I had read a lot online that the chicken dinners at Knott's Berry have like really good biscuits and boysenberry butter and like really good chicken and mashed potatoes. It's a great restaurant. Everybody goes there. It's like classic. But they also have a to-go counter that you can go to on your way out and they pack it all nicely, kind of like KFC, ready to go. And you can take it with you to your hotel or your home or whatever. And everybody recommended it. Well, on the night we went, it was a disaster. It took like almost 45 minutes to get our order. They were just not with the program. So I would suggest maybe... Um, I don't even know what I would suggest. I would suggest maybe eating in the restaurant and not using the to-go order. That's how disappointed I was with how long it took and, like, the disorganization. Like, I'm pretty sure you would got faster service in the restaurant itself after the park closed than that. So, um, that's just my, my take. It might have been a really off night for them, but, I mean, yeah, it was say, really off. You did say there were some people there who said they were annual pass holders and they'd never had it that slow, so yeah, we but it was got really a really slow, bad day. So, but yeah, I, that's just something yeah, I would We say. don't know if it was a really bad day or things were going downhill, so... Yeah, so just be careful on that one because everybody's like, oh, yeah, it takes it to go. You know, you can get it real quick and just take it back to your hotel when your kids are tired. Really easy. Dinner, good, and you still get to enjoy it. They did pack it up nice, you know, and they did include all the biscuits and everything. But like I said, it was just so, so slow. We would have been better off pretty much picking anything besides that. So that was my learning experience on the chicken to go, uh, the Knott's chicken. Um, in terms of us, I feel we didn't prep quite enough for the lines. Now, I would not say the lines were bad at all. They were they were good. They were really good, but we did not prep our first grader Alfin enough. Um, we probably, as a tip, should have taken him to one or more places that have lines <laughs> before we went. Not just like a zoo or something, but like an amusement park up here or something would have been good. Just so he got more used to waiting in lines. Um, because he spent a lot of time just going, it's taking forever, over and over and over again. And, and I think he just wasn't used to it. So that's something that was on us. We didn't practice with him enough. So I would definitely say if you're going on a trip to a big park, it might be worthwhile to go to even like a, a little kitty land in your area where there's going to be a little wait for the lines and at least practice it so they get kind of used to it. I think that would have been like a good idea for, for Alton anyway. So your turn. Um, 
Uh, just a real specific thing, in Camp Snoopy, there's a Ferris wheel, which some of the kids enjoyed, but the line for that moved really, really slow. So that's a good one if you have some older kids who want to go on that and some younger kids who want to do other things. Put the older kids in line and go take the younger kids to some other things, because we probably did three or four other rides while the Ferris wheel crew was waiting for their turn. Yeah, the Ferris wheel was kind of slow. Um, let's see, anything else? I would say that Camp Snoopy is really, really nice. It's got tons of little kid rides. But it's really thick or condensed. There is like a lot to do there, so it's it's deceiving. You think you can go through it faster than you can. So um, I would say do half of it if you're going to be there for two days, and then do some of the other lands, and then do the second half the second day because literally I think we started there on the first day at ten, and I think it was at two that we said we're not going to go over the bridge and do the four rides there because it was getting warm, and we moved on to like about two to the um, fiesta area. And, like, we literally went from ride to ride to ride to ride to ride, and it was that, like, condensed. There's just a lot there. So I think you don't have to do all of Snoopy Land. Like, now, if you only have little kids with you, obviously that's going to be a high point, and then you'll do a couple things in Ghost Town, like the um, train and the, the um, carriage, what is it, stagecoach. But, um, yeah, I don't think if you're going to be there for more than one day, you can kind of split it and stop and then go around and then come back. That might be good if you have a different breakdown of age groups because there was a lot in Snoopy Land. I will say that they had Snoopy at the entrance gate and some other characters. They did have Snoopy in Snoopy Land to take pictures with. Like there was plenty of opportunity for character pictures there which I really appreciated and the lines were pretty sturdy on that. Like even if there was a line they were pretty fast and the characters I thought were really interactive with the kids and really um, really good. So I thought that was a plus. Yeah, um, another tip, the entry to the park first thing in the morning um, we're, we're used to... Is that your pretty ears? Otherwise I can look at myself. Ew. Get the camera. Okay. Anyhow, we're used to Disneyland when they're going to be opening. They've got the gates open, people start milling about on Main Street, and then they drop the rope and everybody goes charging off into the park. Um, at least it seemed to be here that they just didn't open the gates until the official opening time, and then people came through as fast as they could scan their tickets. So it was a big line and um, took a while for everybody to get going into there, so unless you're first in line, you've got to wait there. It might have been better to have come down a little bit later instead of getting there a couple minutes before opening. Yeah, we got there, like, let's say 9.40, 9.45, and we probably would have done better to get there at 10.30 and let the mass of the line go through and just be able to go through at a little faster pace, I think, especially with Alton, because, like I said, Alton just... He was done long before we got into yeah, the park on the first day. Just, we didn't practice enough, which was on us and he just wasn't ready. The rest of the kids were pretty good, but uh, Alton was like, whoa. I mean, Brighton threw out his binky here or there because he was like, we're not moving, but that wasn't too bad. But Alton was just like crazed because we weren't moving and we're just standing there and that wasn't cool. So, um, Any other tips you have for the trip? I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think too. Um, oh, I know a good one. I said around um, in the afternoon, it was pretty hot on our first day there. Well, like 85 maybe, 84. And I'm like, let's get dipping nuts. <laughs> let's get some ice cream because it was hot. And I told Hubby to get a small one for each of everybody, thinking, hey, that's a good idea. <laughs> you know, everybody can cool down. And then they were going to go ride the um, log ride. And I figured they could ride the log ride, and the little kids could finish eating their dipping dots, right? And the ones that didn't want to ride the log ride. Perfect. <laughs> well, Hubby ended up telling me it was like $80 or something to get 12 dipping dot little containers. Yeah, they were six And they weren't, they weren't huge. They're not like huge containers. They're like no. the small Baskin Robin size, whatever. They weren't overflowing. They were in the container itself. It wasn't like a scoop that was over. They're like little dots in there. Now, they were really cool, and they did the job. They cooled down, which was a real plus. But um, just be forewarned, <laughs> as there's sticker shops when you go to the amusement park. Those were 6 almost $7 each for the little, little cups. Um, I know the day we bought the ghost town food, for my part, I went and got the burgers and the chicken and the fry plates, like the chicken strips and fries, the burgers and fries, and each of those plates was $17. A plate. Now, I will say that they were big enough that they could easily feed two, maybe three adults, depending on how you cut up the burger or the chicken strips. So, in that way, you could say, well, they're $17, but it's really $8 a person, which wasn't too bad, and it came with a drink. <clears throat> but regardless, sticker shock a little bit, $17. Now, he bought the funnel, cake. the funnel cakes. How were those? Those, I don't remember. I don't think they were as bad, and again, we were mm -hmm. sharing them with people. Yeah, we had yeah. two kids per funnel cake. But yeah, so the, there was a little bit of sticker shock, but I think that per amusement park, if you went to Disneyland, I remember looking online because we had been looking, I think like the Darth 
the Darth Maul burger was like twenty four dollars for at least twenty. Yeah, for burgers and fries, so it was in line with what they charge in LA music parks for music park food. But just as a you know, like a suggestion, or how much were the pretzels? Because you did buy pretzels. The pretzels, relatively speaking, I don't think were like bad. The cotton candy, I don't think, bucks, yeah, maybe. the cotton candy wasn't bad. So, you know, definitely split plates, that's probably a good plan. I would say if you're buying yeah. the burger or the chicken, split it among people, two or three. And then if they're still hungry, get a pretzel, get a cotton candy or churro, something like that. You bought churros, so I don't think they were that bad. I don't remember you yeah. coming back sticker shocked with that. Yeah. So that might help spread it out a little bit more for the lunch. Um, just as a suggestion, because, yeah, the sticker price for amusement park food is the sticker price. Now, I wanted you to talk about the drinks, because I thought that was a really good deal oh, okay. for families yeah. especially. Yeah. First, just before we get off the sticker shop, that's one of the things I always tell people who are asking about Disneyland is whatever you're planning for the food, it's going to be a lot more expensive. And same thing got me here. Like, okay, we've got about this much in our budget, and whoa, you just spent what? So it was <laughs> chalk and worry for the whole time. So, But yeah, the good deal they have is they have um, souvenir sipper cups which are, what, probably like 32 ounces or something? Yeah, they're pretty big. Pretty big cups. Um, and it goes down. We bought three of them, so the price was ten ninety nine each. I think they started at like fourteen ninety nine if you were buying one, then twelve ninety nine for two, or ten ninety nine for three. And you get free refills on the day you buy them. They each have unique barcodes, so they scan them at the location Which to know that cool. you get them. Yeah. Yeah. And then the rest of the season, they have dollar refills on them. It's 93 cents plus the tax brings it up to a dollar. So that was actually a really good deal. First time we went for any sort of a snack, we bought three souvenir cups, which is about right for the amount our group drinks through. Um, and then the rest of that first day, we got free refills as we needed. And the next day we took them, we rinsed them back in the hotel room, took them in the next day and had dollar drinks. So we got $3, get all three of them refilled. And we did that a few times. Yeah, I thought that was a really good deal. And I wanted to bring up, if your kids aren't too into soda, I have one or two that are not into soda. They have boysenberry juice at the concession stand. So instead of the um, Coke or Pepsi or lemonade, you could get boysenberry juice. And Brighton really, really liked that. And so did Rio. So that was like a good, I thought that was a nice alternative. They really, really liked that. So that was yeah. a really good choice. Jen thought it was a little syrupy. but the For kids me it was, it. but the kids drank it like whatever. And these are ones like, especially Rio doesn't like soda. So that gave him something to drink besides just water. So that worked out really well. And also on those drink refills, make sure you get another refill on your way out of the park to either have back at the hotel or to take with you when you're driving home, whatever it is you're doing. Unless you're catching a plane, then they probably don't want you to bring it on. Yeah, probably not. Um, let's see, any other yeah. tips? Yeah. Along those lines, the thing that was catching us is we usually bring some snacks to pack for the hotel. Um, we were light on drinks. It was hot that first day, so everybody was parched, and we were running low on water. Um, we figured out on our way driving out that there is a Walgreen pharmacy like kitty quarter across one of the streets from the hotel and that would have been really good we figured that out soon enough to send me down make a run buy some sort of drink they did have drinks at the hotel you could buy water in your hotel room for four dollars that would be charged to your room or um you could go to the vending machines which i think was probably four or five dollars but it would have probably been yeah. cheaper to go to walgreens but they did i don't want to make it sound like you didn't need a drink in the hotel because they did they had coffee they had tea obviously you have sneak water so they did have drinks, but just if, if you wanted something else for your kids to drink, we could have got juice boxes, for example, or something. Yeah. I, I found the vending machines to be a little challenging. The one on our floor would not take cash, only credit card, which is a nice option, except after two times, our credit card was saying, us, hey, you need to call and authorize, and there's nobody there to call and authorize, so I was just turning it down. Um, and one of the other floors was completely out of service, and then the other one, when I went to get Jenna water, it was out of water. And charging different prices on our floor. <laughs> so um, I think that's the tips I have. Do you have any more tips on the trip? Or like I things you want to hit with kids or any suggestions? Um, maybe just try and check on the time for when Susie goes down reading bedtime stories. We managed to miss that both nights. Yeah, that would be really good. He's supposed to be in the lobby, I think, at 8, and we just didn't catch it right to catch Snoopy there at bedtime. So that's the one thing we missed that we would have liked to catch at the hotel. In terms of parks, do you have any more tips, like for going through the park, any suggestions, or? Um, we could maybe say that the Fiesta area had a lot less shade. Camp Snoopy was the shadiest part of the park. Yeah, so definitely. That also be what might be one to aim for the hotter part of the day to get the shade there. Oh, I do have one one tip following along that. The boardwalk is really, really loud, so if you have um, 
kids that are a little more sensitive or don't like a lot of loud, like it bothers them and they cover their ears. I found that Diego was like over overstimulated by the amount of noise at the boardwalk. He was okay in Fiesta, he was okay in Ghost Town, he was okay in Snoopy Land, but the boardwalk itself, that particular area, maybe the echoing or just the coaster that was really close to the ground, whatever it was, that was a bit loud for him. So um, just if you have a, you know, like a sensitive sensory child, you might want to be careful about the boardwalk on that one or, or introduce it slowly or you might realize one of you needs to go to another section while the other people do the boardwalk because there was a lot of games there were a lot of just like noisy rides and it was just a little too much none of the other lands he had a problem with just that one but I think that that was like his max sensory overload there so I don't think I have any more tips for you I think that's about it for me okay so we hope some of those tips are helpful for families going to Knott's Berry Farm or staying at Knott's Berry Farm Hotel um, let us know if you guys have any tips uh, for us as well because we're always learning like I took the chicken advice and it was good food but you know what I mean like I'm always willing to listen to tips so if you guys have any tips that you want to share with us go ahead and share it down below and we'll see you guys on the Six Flags tomorrow Saturday. Bye. Bye.